Ladies and gentlemen, uh, real late on Hot 97 on a Sunday night, and Jacksonville Zone, Grand Hustle yeah. Zone, Tokyo Jets is here. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thanks for coming by. Thank you for having me. Um, first of all, tell me about what's the hip hop scene in Jacksonville? I don't know that I've ever talked about the music <laughs> scene in Jacksonville. I mean, I think it's a little bit different from anything else in the world. Really? I think it's, if I could relate it to another place, I would probably say New Orleans. Really? Why is that? Because it's like gangster rap. Hmm. It's like they're going to talk about how they're going to shoot you. And all of it is true. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you get a mix of that. And then you also get a mix of like you got a lot of dope R&B artists, singers. But for the most part, I would compare it to New Orleans. And what kind of what kind of hip hop did you grow up on specifically? Uh, I grew up on a lot of pop. I grew up with I grew up listening to a lot of R&B, though, actually. Which might be surprising. Old R&B, current R&B, like what kind of stuff? Like Jagged Edge. Mm. Like Which now is old. Wow. This is now throwback R&B. I still listen to it, though. See? I can't just ride and listen to like what people listen to today. You have, a, you have an older soul. If that's what you want to call Slightly. it. Slightly. Although it's so <laughs> funny to me because now that I'm still not used to that stuff being old, but it is decidedly old. Yeah, unfortunately. But to, yeah, but to me it's still, it's I still can't like accept that that's old. Um, and you... You loved rapping in the car? Yeah, that's how I started out. Just rapping along to records, freestyling? Would you bring instrumentals? How'd you? The first uh, video that I did in my car, I was just like in my feelings, to be honest. And I wanted to do a video and I tried to do it in my room and it sounded horrible. So I went and did it in my car and it sounded perfect. So I just <laughs> continued to do it from there. What were you What were you being emo about? Uh, <laughs> Break up. It wasn't really a breakup. It was like I was messing with a guy and then like somebody who he was supposed to be in a relationship with like slid in my DMs like, mm. yeah, so, but I mean, it worked out for the better for me. I don't know about them. What you, you mean from the, from the standpoint of you figuring out what your, maybe your calling was? Right. And in retrospect, how long did it take for you to like figure out making music? I mean, obviously you're that still that figuring out. That was like out. really what I wanted to yeah. do. Yeah. Um, I did that video like maybe mid 2016 and then the video hit like a million views the first day and I started to book shows and at the time I was working like three jobs. So how did the video blow up though? I guess people related, but no, really, I feel like people related. And then it was another group of people that was like arguing with, with what I was talking about. Cause in the video, I was basically saying like, instead of a girl approaching another girl, she's supposed to address her guy. And it was like, of course, people agreeing. And then it was people who was like, oh, you're a home wrecker type. So they was arguing back and forth, which made the video like catch more traction. So your standpoint in the original video was, why are you sliding in my DMs? Right. Why don't you just I talk? I don't know about you. Right. I had no idea. So you guys need to work it out. Like, I'm not the person to right. fight with. Which, by the way, it's obvious. It's like the truest thing ever. I mean, we over and over again, you see like videos of like side chicks getting like dragged out of restaurants. But it's not her like, fault. But it's not. I don't. I've never understood why the, the onus of a relationship is on the people in the relationship. Right. I've never understood that. I'm not. Anyways. People going to try to fight you for saying that. <laughs> yeah. No, I guess your people get upset about that. I'm sorry. I, and I recognize that as someone in a relationship, I recognize if, if, if my wife decides that she's bored in the relationship, that's in our relationship. It's that's not, not the other person's fault. Yeah. I, people don't really think things through. What about the name Tokyo Jets? Where does it come from? Mm -hmm. My eyes are like super chinky. When I was in high school, uh, a friend of mine was like trying to figure out a nickname. So he called me China. And I knew like a ton of girls that was like dancing at the time with the name. And I didn't want to be associated in no way. So it was like, okay, Tokyo. And then the Jets part came from me being a currency fan. Really? Big currency fan? Mm -hmm. Oh, just, uh, um, I just saw currency again the other day. I hadn't seen him in a very long time. Why did you, um, I mean, he's amazing, obviously. Yeah. But what was it that you gravitated towards about? Um, he's like a lyricist, but at the same time, it's like a flow to it. And it's dope and it makes you pay attention. And I just stayed tuned for everything he dropped from the first time I heard him. Where do you feel like you fit in today? Like it's a very weird time for new artists because like the very newest artists, a lot of them, I jokingly fit into a category called, you know, it's like face tat rap, right? Or <laughs> I don't, I don't think mumble rap is fair. 
because yeah. I think it's I think it can be misleading musically. Right. Um, and I think a lot of them, and even the face tat rap, I still like a bunch of the artists. Right. But it does create sort of a weird space in that, like, if you're someone who's more about spitting, right, you might not know where to go and where to find that, even though they're there. Right. So where do you think that you fit in Tokyo Jets? Okay, so to first address like the face tap face tat rap thing, I think those are like solely rappers who come from the suburbs and who are trying to make themselves look and sound what they feel like somebody who come from where I come from would look and sound like. So like if you really come from it, you ain't gotta make people believe that's what you come from. Cause it like it, it's real, it's gonna show. Um but, but I, I mean, there are a lot of face tat rappers though that are from the hood too. Mm. I mean, F Famous Dex has face tats. Um, Kodak has face tats. Okay, so that's like that's like. So I guess you're saying the difference. You're saying the difference between um, like you can have tattoos on your face but not be a face tat rapper. Is that what right. you're saying? Okay. Okay. <laughs> So that clears it up. Um, but I think the thing that sets me apart from other new artists is... Your highest tattoo is only on your neck. Correct. <laughs> um, but I speak from a real place. Like, I'm not an artist that's, like, chasing a hit. I really just go into the studio and I make whatever music I feel like is the music that I want to make. I'm not trying to do anything to impress anybody. Either you mess with me or either you don't. And it's, that's just what you get. And at the same time, I'm real. Um, and something that really sets me apart from other artists is I can actually articulate and have a conversation, and most people can't do that. That is interesting to see not only someone who can do that, but takes pride in doing that. Like You actually <laughs> you like being able to be, have conversations. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, do you, in some ways, wish that it was a different time, or do you feel that this is a good time? Because there are also a lot of, there are a lot of artists now who also are making great lyrical music right. too. So sometimes we get caught up thinking about one. The the face tat part of rap is the <laughs> loudest thing right now. Right. But really when you listen to the radio on who's popular, mm -hmm. you end up finding a lot of Kendrick right. and J. Cole and who, whoever, Nicki Minaj and right. Travis Scott. And there's a lot of really musical mm -hmm. stuff as well. I mean, I think I'm I think I'm in the right era because there's nobody else. There's no other female artist that's like doing what I'm doing. I don't sell sex. Yeah, I know I'm attractive, but I don't have to rap about it. I made anybody that's ever heard me rap, I made them respect me because I can actually rap. Yeah, I walk into a room and you can say I'm pretty, but that's not all you get. Hmm. And I think I'm like one of the only people that's like that right now. That has the sort of the option to if they wanted to go sell sex they could, but opt to just be lyrical. And then, like, with female artists, I don't know too many guys that actually can ride around and listen to a female. But, like, with me, I know a ton of guys that just listen because they say I, I say something that they would say or I say something that they've been through, and that's just because it's real. Hmm. That's very interesting. I think you're absolutely right about that. I mean, I think some of that problem is just that men are lame and don't listen. <laughs> And don't listen to women, even when women you really are right. don't. You know, like for that has always been an issue of male DJs and and hip hop heads not wanting to listen. Right. But it just it's because let's be honest, people are selfish and they want to hear their experience. Right. So a lot of times they don't like hearing about someone else's experience. You're right. But I don't understand that because I only got into hip hop to listen to other people's experiences that I couldn't relate to. Unfortunately, everybody doesn't see it like that. Yeah. Though. Some people want to like. That's why it always bothered me. I remember having these conversations with um, a lot of white artists over the years is that what always concerned me early on was that when I would go to their shows, if the shows were predominantly white, I got uncomfortable with the idea of like white fans listening to a white artist's experience. Cause mm -hmm. I was like, it's so far removed from what the culture was originally based on. Right. And from at least what old school white hip hop heads were in it for, right. which was to learn about you know, the the black and Latino experience. That's right. kind of part of what the deal was. But obviously, the game has changed a lot. Time has changed. and there Everything. Are, <laughs> everything changes all the time. Now, how did you end up with Grand Hustle? Um, I, again, started out doing these videos in my car. And they started to go viral. And a couple of people would comment on my videos. And Tip just happened to be one of those people. So I reached out to him. And he was like, I told you, you dope. I just commented and said that. And I was like, nah, that ain't enough. 
<laughs> so I bugged him for a minute. And he told me to send him some music. I sent him some music. I ain't hear nothing for like a week. And then he finally called me and I ignored his call for like a day straight because I thought it was somebody playing on my phone. <laughs> the old someone's playing on my phone trick. Because <laughs> I like screenshot it when he commented and I was like, oh, he messing with me or whatever. So I was like, somebody's seen this and they just playing with me. But it was really him. He flew me to Atlanta and I've been there ever since. Wow. And uh, and now where are we in terms of in the process? You have you have a record out right now, which we'll play in a second. Right. But when are you dropping a project? My project actually drops the 30th of September. So right around now. Yeah. And what's the name of your project? My project is titled Bonafide. Tokyo Jets Bonafide. Did you um, you have T.I. on it? I do. Trey songs. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Cash Doll. Cash Doll. And then also Trina. Oh, how, what did, was that? Uh? That's that's. The, I mean that's. I mean that's dope to be a to be a woman MC right. from Florida and get Trina on the debut project. That must have been exciting. It's love. Like for me, I grew up on Trina, so like that was dope to me for her to even like respond when I reached out and then to get the record done. Because a lot of artists give you the runaround and they tell you they'll do something and they don't. But for her to actually get the record done and me to be able to put it on my project, that's dope. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Why Cash Doll? I love Cash Doll. <laughs> there are a lot of dolls. What makes Cash Doll the right doll? <laughs> um, I actually worked with Cash Doll before when we did the digital cipher for BT. So I met her in person and we just like meshed from the time that I met her and she's always shown me genuine love. The other dolls I don't really have a problem with, but I haven't actually met them too connect so it's a little bit different it is crazy how many dolls there are though right now it's sort of like the face tat thing i can't believe how much but, everything happens at one time <laughs> but the thing is like i don't understand why it's the problem like because i'm tokyo jets and then i know another tokyo vanity who is from new orleans and like we're cool with it and it's no issue why there used to be a thing back in the back in my day here you go <laughs> it's just like anything in hip hop that was close to anyone else's thing right. was a problem it was like i mean and i know it's different there's way more artists now mm -hmm. it's harder but it used to just be like if if you even thought someone was doing something like you right it was an issue but that's like saying that there shouldn't be a little zan there shouldn't be a little pump there shouldn't be a little baby like but a lot of people do feel that way a lot of people hate the little but they're still there and they're not beefing with each other that's true Oh, you mean like, oh, the dolls shouldn't have problems with each other. Why? Is there inner doll beef? I think so. Mm. <laughs> I would just say this. The same people that I have heard make jokes about like how many dolls are there are right. the same people who say, damn, how many Lils are there? Gotcha. It's just, so for me, I see what you're saying too. You're absolutely right. There shouldn't be, you certainly shouldn't have special rules for the women in the game that all right. of a sudden they had doll and it's worse than having Lil or Young. Right. I think it's equivalent. It's to come 100% equivalent. I think there are a lot of people... <laughs> old heads who are like they don't too many lils too many youngs too many dolls make up some new shit that's like but most of the time group. that's their names well that's the problem too is that <laughs> that's is their that names before rap names in people's neighborhoods have a lot of little and young yeah you know what I'm saying and we all do it we're all like oh that's little so and so right that's big so and so <laughs> Now, young I feel like people should have more foresight because young you always know is going to change at some point it has to that one has to lil may last but young, God willing, will always change. <laughs> um, yo, it's been a pleasure to meet you. It's fun meeting someone who likes to talk. What are you doing these days? Besides music, what are you doing that's making you happy these days? Like when you're trying to get into a happy zone? I'm what with is my family a lot. Um, well, not a lot as of now because I'm working a lot more, which is what I asked for. But anytime I'm able to spend time with my family, I'm, I'm cool with that. So that's where you find like you're any other, like you don't have any activities or games or things you're listening to or I'm gonna sh shop for sure I'm gonna spend a bag always <laughs> you enjoy shopping you're, absolutely you're, got it yeah you don't see this I was about to say the drip is strong <laughs> I mean listen there's a drip there's a confirmed drip you know what I'm saying <laughs> he said it's confirmed there's a confirmed drip yeah, people are talking about it I definitely like to shop um I like to spend time with my nephew and I'm from Florida so anything on water jet skiing boating swimming anything like that um, well, listen, it has been a real pleasure getting to meet you. Tokyo Jets Bonafide is out on the 30th. If you want to hear uh, a woman who spits hot flames, we're going to play her record right now. <laughs> What's the name of the song with T.I.? The song with T.I. is 1,000, keeping it 1,000. All right, so we're going to play a couple joints now from Tokyo Jets. Um, nice meeting you, by the way. You also. Thank you for having me. Cheers. <laughs>